Wonderful to see so many beautiful faces this morning. Um, my name is Julian. I'm the senior pastor here along with my wife, Libby. Uh, and it's our pleasure to do something a little bit different this morning. Just show of hands if you were here for the start of our well-being series a few weeks ago. Um, excellent. And so uh, for those of you that weren't here, uh, hopefully you can catch up online. But we've been talking about what is God's plan for our well-being. Uh, and we opened the series stay, uh, stating that there are so many aspects to our lives. And often when it comes to our faith, we think about our well-being um, sort of secondary to our spirituality. And what we've discovered is, uh, as you read across the Bible, that actually we're, we're, we're made in the image of God. And within that makeup, that every aspect of our being is used to glorify God. And so actually, whether it's our physicality, whether it's our emotions, whether it's our spirituality, our vocation, our finances, our relationships, all of these things are a part of who we are. And all of these things are used to be uh, something that glorifies God. And so uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about physical well-being. Uh, but rather than um, do, do a, a standard preach, what I thought would be really good to do is hear from different life experiences, different stages of the journey. Because as we look out across the room, uh, there's a sense in which our physicality changes from generation to generation. Uh, I have a, a son who's almost two years old, and he is very bounceable. Like, if he falls over and he injures himself, he's very good at just getting up and cracking on. I, however, when I fall over, uh, cannot bounce back like Judah does. I, I creak a little bit more. My, my joints seize up. My, my knuckles hurt from doing carpentry years ago. Um, I've got an old sports injury and other ailments are available. Um, I, fi I find my physicality is changing over time. And so the question I start to ask myself is, what does it mean to glorify God in every season? And what does it mean to see him work in every aspect of my physicality? whether I'm um, uh, as able as my child or less able as I go on in life. And the truth is, as we look out across the room, there's many of you in different life circumstances. You know, some of you, um, you need to rest more. That actually might be a word for some of you this morning. You might need to go to bed at a decent hour and not take your technology into the bedroom with you and get a good night's sleep. Some of you are working long hours and, and you need to sleep more. Uh, some of you uh, have got small children and you uh, are just as sleep deprived. You need to sleep more. Uh, there's a common occurrence here around sleep. Uh, but some of you are just juggling the day to day of life and some of you are actually doing really well in those areas. But the question remains is what is the Lord saying to me through this season uh, of physicality? And rather than me talk about it, I thought I'd introduce some wonderful people. People. So let's just find out who we've got with us this morning. Let's just have your first name and just maybe a one or two sentences about um, where you're at in life. Hi, my name's Wendy. And I'm not, there's a lot of other Wendy's. So I'm Wendy Taylor, but just Wendy will do this morning. And um, circumstances in my life changed drastically 18 months ago when I had a series of falls. I fractured my arm and I also had fractured several vertebrae in my spine and I couldn't carry on doing the things I was doing so it was like uh oh I don't like that I loved doing what I was doing and I don't want to stop but physically I have to and so it was making sure that I found out where God was in that and I'm still finding that out <laughs> so amazing thank you Wendy let's give it up for Wendy <laughs> Uh, we're not clapping to um, make them feel good. We're clapping to just honour their time as well. So it's really good to do that. Uh, Tiago. Hello, church. My name is Tiago. Uh, Tiago Silva. I am not the football player. Uh, <laughs> um, I had to Google that. You did, to, didn't you? <laughs> Any relation? Um, so, yeah, I've been, I've been coming to, here at Sutton Vineyard for around five years uh, with my beautiful wife, Isabel. Hello, Belle. Love you. Hello. Um, and yeah, so where, where I am in life right now, I feel like I'm in, in a good rhythm with life. Um, of course, ups and downs, that's, that's life, that's how it is. But um, yeah, in a moment where right now I feel, I feel like God is, is testing me, um, my physical and my mental strength and my spiritual strength as well. I can go through more details later on as we, we talk about it. But um, yeah, um, using the words that you've been using here during the well-being, um, you know, uh, weekly that you've been saying, like, in a good rhythm, in a good, like, balance in life. Yeah, not balance, rhythm. Rhythm, tension, good, super. Give it up for Tiago. Hello. Oh, that was very quiet, wasn't it? <clears throat> I have had a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Come standing up. That's why I'm sat all the way over here. Health and well-being. I'm fine now, but um, my name is Faith. Um, I'm guessing I might be called up here because 
you said when you get older, things happen. So I, I ascribe to nobody the, the section one. where I was talking <laughs> about being older. Um, yeah, I'm in a in a good phase of a good rhythm of life. Um, I've had lots of ill health through my life, but I'm in a good place with it now. I wasn't when I was younger. I struggled a lot with some health issues. I didn't handle it very well as, you know, a Christian. But now as I've got older, I think God has taught me an awful lot about the illness that I've suffered, um, which I still have. I've got leukemia now, so I'm never going to be without cancer. It's my fifth one. Um, but I'm in a very positive place, actually, which might sound very weird, but I really am in a positive place. So Tremendous. Give it up for faith. So you don't like we've, we've got three uh, very different journeys of life, and hopefully it speaks to us on, on several different levels. And one of the things I've realized is that I'm not invincible, and I think that turns you know, beyond 18. Most 18-year-olds think they're invincible, and you get beyond 18, and you realize you're not. Um, and then you read verses like 1 Timothy 4, 8, which I think is going to come up on screen. It says this. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, uh, holding promise for, vo- for both the present life and the life to come. And the Bible does talk a lot about our physicality in different levels. But the emphasis really for uh, Paul speaking to Timothy is that our training needs to come in line with the Lord, that whatever we're doing, we need to bring our lives in line with the Lord. And so the first question I'm just going to throw out and feel free anyone to chip in uh, first is this. Just talk about a moment in your life where you've had to listen to what your body was trying to tell you and what did the Lord teach you through this? I'll go first. I'm holding the mic. I'll go first. <laughs> um, for me, for me, it was at some point during my career where I was, I was doing really well. A lot of things coming on my way and then I was saying yes to everything and before that i kind of like i had a a good control over my time with my family with my friends with things that i like to do in life but at some point uh, i completely lost control and work uh, started to to be priority in my life and i work um as as a fitness instructor uh, a personal trainer i i coach and i i train uh, athletes also like people who wants to have a, a, a better lifestyle and, and active life. But um, so it's very physical. So it got to a point where my body was going to pieces and I, I really felt it. I had no energy to, uh, when, I, when I was spending time with my family, with my friends. Um, I was always like completely burn out. And also, like, I stopped doing a lot of things that always brought me so much happiness, like activities, sports, hanging out with, with people. And, and then at some point, my body was really close to crush, and I was so tired. And I thought, like, also, like, a, a lot of moments I had that feeling, like, God speaking to me, you need to, do it, you need to change, you need to change. He was trying to teach me something. And, and then... Thanks God for that. I, I decide to hold on. Let me rethink. Let me rewind and and restructure my, my life. And then I, I learned to say no to a lot of things, a lot of temptations, like the temp- temptations in terms of good stuff. But like, no, 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 no. Family comes first. Church comes first. God comes first. And 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 my well-being comes first. And, and then I found a really good... Uh, groove to to just balance it off everything and and carry on in life so yeah just i learned to say no to a lot of things i was i'm still am a very yes person but um yeah sometimes we have to learn how to say no i think it's amazing that god can teach you different things regardless of your stage of life and um when you mentioned things have shifted a little bit just tell us a little bit about what does it mean to care for your physicality in this new season around what does it mean to care for physicality uh in this new season for you believing that i can't carry on doing what i was doing at that rate because i physically can't i can't pick up a baby anymore i can't carry a baby i can't walk up the stairs without holding on both sides so it's like i can't do it so i have to accept that because i physically can't so there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. And it's, it's that moment, isn't it, where we come to the Lord and go, okay, things have changed now. So what does it mean to find 
God's glory in these moments and actually what is it that I can do? And have you found that the Lord's taught you anything through that, it's, that mindset it, shift? It's taking joy in what I can yeah. do. I mean, I love having our grandchildren. They bring me so much joy. And now that they're of such an age that I don't have to carry them, you know, if Max stands on three steps up, I can pick him up from the stairs and things like that. And they're very, they're very independent. So it's doing things that I can do that bring me joy. And actually spending time with Dave, with my husband, and my boys, three of them, that brings me joy. So it, it's finding things that bring me joy. And also spending time with the Lord. I, worship's always on in our house. And I sing along. Not in the shower, just anywhere I am in the house, singing <laughs> along. And I find the words of some worship songs really speak to how I feel about God and where I am. What I really love about um, having spent time with you and David as well is uh, we came over for dinner a few months ago and that recognition of, okay, what is it that God has given me? And actually that attitude, so it's going to sound cheesy, the attitude of gratitude, uh, we do say it all the time, but that bring that sense of this is what the Lord has given me right now. I'm going to make the best of that and use that to glorify him, I think is a tremendous uh, approach. Uh, Faith, uh, what about you? How does caring for yourself physically factor into God's desire for your well-being? Well, I, I know that God what is for me, you know, and he wants us to be joyful, he wants us to be well. Um, but I think we have a part to play that in that as well. We have one body, we've got to look after it. So I try not to abuse it with alcohol or drugs or whatever. I mean, I'm pretty good at going to bed early. I sleep, um, you know, get good sleep. Um, I exercise a lot. And I think, you know, it's just listening to your body, isn't it? Um, you know, when... You shouldn't be doing things. I mean, my trainer always says, if the problem is from the neck up, you can train. If it's from the neck down, you can't. I.e., if you've got a cold, you can still train. Mm. Well, my immune system is battered. And so why would I train if my immune system was battered? Give it something else to work on. So I don't. When I'm ill, I sit at home and I watch TV. It's very lazy, sorry. Um, but I let myself get 100% better before I go back to the gym. So that's how I care for myself. But I know God wants me to do that. He wants me to look after the body that I've been given. Tremendous. It's interesting you just say sitting down and watching TV is lazy. I'm, I'm just going to challenge that a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, it's resting, uh, isn't as it? As a confessed tally addict. Um, uh, active and passive resting really is what I want to talk about next. So... Um, because oh, often we feel that, don't we? When we stop, we get that mindset, oh, I'm just being a little bit lazy. But no, actually, you're resting. That's doing something uh, when you're resting. And I think sometimes we can take that for granted. And, you know, it says this in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. Uh, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish for following the example of disobedience. Now, this is talking about the Sabbath day. It's talking about Holy Day. But the principle of Sabbath, which we've touched upon, is the sense in which we're recentering ourselves on God. And actually, that's not just about prayer. It's not just about worship, but also listening to our body again. Actually, do we physically need some rest? And, and is that a case of sitting down, which we'd call passive resting and watching Netflix or you know, other streaming services are available? Um, or is it going for a walk or is it doing something engaging uh, that's, that's active resting? And so my question really is, how do you best rest? Um, actively by doing something refreshing, passively? Uh, and how do you bring God into that as well? Do you bring God into that? For me, I, I use both. Um, so that, that is something that um, I do very often, which to, uh, for me is more like a mental uh, rest, but it's very physical. So I love surfing. I really love surfing. It's my favorite me thing. Me too. Yeah, I'm a big surfer. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, Why is that I'll, not believable? <laughs> <laughs> I, take, I take very seriously, and um, I go very often, even here in the UK when it's super warm. Um, but um, yeah, so... You know, when I come back, um, sometimes I drive for one day. I go to North Devon, five hours in the car, come back um, after a whole day of surfing. But I come back very tired. But mentally, like inside, I can't, I can't even explain the feeling. You know, it's, it's like pure joy, happiness. And, and I think one of the reasons as well that I love surfing and I, and I come back with this feeling is because... 
I really try to connect my spiritual to, to the moment that I'm living in there. So I'm, you know, like I'm in the water. Sometimes I have some beautiful um, sunshine or sun, uh, sunrise, um, sunset. And I really try to use that moment to connect that feeling. Uh, so uh, there's so many stories that I had it where I experienced God when I'm in the water. So, I, yeah, I do bring God to, to that kind of like uh, rest but physically really, really tired. But also, I really love sitting down on my sofa with my wife and my dogs and watch a good Netflix and, and just do nothing. I love it. I love it. And I do very often. Nowadays, even more than before because, you know, we change. Uh, I don't have the same energy that I had it like 10 years ago. You know, but, um, but yeah, I think I use a bit of both. And... Yeah, I simply love it. But nowadays, more Netflix than surfing, to be honest. <laughs> True. Tremendous. I'm just realizing that if there was a scale of resting and there was active far over there, that's, that's where you are, Tiago. And then over here on passive is me. And so uh, where are you guys in the middle of that scale? How do you, how do you guys rest, uh, Wendy? <laughs> okay. I'm not as young as Tiago, so I'm probably not going surfing. But um, I think it depends. If your mind needs rest, so sometimes my mind needs rest as opposed to my body. And I would go for a walk with friends. I'd learn Italian. Yes, that is resting my mind, honestly, believe me. You know, um, I'd go to the gym. I love the gym. I love boxing and lifting weights and things. So to me, to get away from life, I would go to the gym. And I meet friends, so it's a... You know, it's a social thing as well. I do a class. So I can just zone out in a class for an hour, you know. So that's what I would do if my mind needs rest. But if my body needs rest, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, those things as well. None of us are on uh, commission for these services, just for put it out. I mean, for, for me, it's an interesting. Uh, Wendy, I'm sure you'll share in a second the different ways you rest. For me, it, I call them do-nothing days where I have no agenda, there's no plan. Uh, I like to be spontaneous, should I want to be? If I want to sit at home and drink a cup of coffee and just stare at the flowers in my garden, that's also good. If I wanted to watch uh, a movie with the family, that is also available, but it's that option and that freedom that really I really find that fills my tank. Wendy, what replenishes your soul? I like watching movies, and I love cooking. So, And if I'm entertaining, that's even better. <laughs> And as I can't go out as much and do as much outside the house, I love having people come and entertaining them. Um, and I find cooking is, is a really lovely way of connecting with God because you're, you're creating and that he's a creator God. So actually, we're doing what he does. And I, that's my connection to him in that. And, and I love watching movies. I spend an awful lot of time watching movies 24. I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's my confession. Was that 24? Movies 24. Movies 20, not Jack Bowers. Movies no. Okay. We were going to connect They're on a whole other level there. Slushy rom-coms most <laughs> of the time. So it, that's escapism. Wonderful. I love that. Um, stay with the microphone, Wendy, because we're going to come to you next. We're going to talk about rhythm and routine. And uh, we've talked a little bit about the idea of maybe not having so much balance, but tension. Uh, balance suggests that we're trying to juggle it all. But rhythm and routine is about um, giving space to the season that we're in. Um, I look at my son and, I, you know, he was playing the other day and I'm so jealous of him. Uh, and I sort of say half jokingly, it's never going to be as good as you've got it right now. And there's everything in me wants him to maximize that sense of timelessness. You know, when as a small child, I don't know if you remember this, but five minutes felt like an eternity. Whereas as an adult, five minutes feels like a, a second. And so I, I kind of want to savor that. And it, it made me think of Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, chapter 1 to 8, and it's talking about the seasons of life that we're in, and it's applicable to every part of our life, but it says this, there's a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them together. A, to get, a time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Oh, imagine. Uh, a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love. A time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And this is a poetic musing um, of King Solomon. 
And he got me thinking about the pace of life. And so how does the season of our lives affect the pace of life for us? Well, my pace of life has completely slowed down because I was very active. I was looking after young babies most of the time, so going out to contact meetings and it was it was just busy all the time. Just as a side note, Wendy, you've done some fostering as well. Yeah. How many kids have you fostered over the years? Um, we've twenty eight over twenty two years. Come on. All That's under amazing. fives. That is amazing. And so it was the hardest thing to lay down because I loved doing it. Mm. And it was making a difference in their lives. And it was showing, it was introducing them to God because we used to bring them to church and people prayed for them. And we saw God work in their lives. And so it was the hardest thing to give up. And I'm still saying to the Lord, why? Why did I have to give it up? Maybe I'll never know. But I know he's with me now, even though I'm not doing that. So. Amazing. Thank you so much, Wendy. Hmm? Yeah. And I think it's, it's recognizing, okay, uh, in the season, you're spending a lot of time in prayer mm. and, and pursuing, okay, what is it that God has got for me in this yeah. season that's now shifted and now changed? Uh, how are you finding the, the feeling of having to be patient in those things? I'm not a very patient This wasn't in the nose, by this. Is a le- <laughs> I'm not a terribly patient person, but there's nothing I can do. So I have to wait for him to, to show me what's next. And I trust that he will walk with me. I know he will. Yeah. I've, I've seen him do that in the past. So That's it. I know I'm not alone, but I don't like it. <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you, Wendy. Faith? I just, we're in an interesting season of our life at the moment in that, as quite a lot of you know, we're moving house. Um, and we are in a time of rest, believe it or not. We've um, ran our home group, Mark and I, for 21 years, and we've literally just stopped that, which was very hard but I think you sometimes have to look, you have to stop and rest because God gives you, you can't give if you're in a place of absolute exhaustion. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people burn out, don't they? Because they don't listen and stop when they need to stop. And I think sometimes if you rest and then you have time when you're resting to hear God and listen to him and he will then maybe have something completely different for you. And then you can give when you're giving in a place of, a rested place rather than an exhausted place. Not saying that my home group exhausted us. They were a wonderful home group. But I felt 21 years was probably time to stop. And it came at the right time when we were out. So. Tremendous. Tiago. And for me, I think I'm leaving now the hardest uh, season of life. Um, so back home, back in Brazil, I'm from Brazil. Uh, my dad is, fi- is fighting cancer right now. So, and we're fighting with, with him, you know. So, it's, it's been a very, very weird moment for me because I always, always thought like, okay, this is a good pace of life. I'm living a good pace of life. But, however, with, with this happening, um, it hasn't actually changed much my pace of life um, because I really put all my trust in him. So, it's not only... When it's good, you know, is is when it's bad. When we 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 don't know the future, but he knows, and and I, I've been putting all my faith and my 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 rest and my pace of life uh, through him, and he's been giving me peace. Um, he's been I, I I really feel like during moments here at church when I go to the small group, there's always something that comforts my heart and listen to a worship song or things like that. So, yeah, not the easiest season, but I feel like God is, is giving me, you know, good control over my foot to, to keep a good, good pace. Yeah. That's awesome. And that, you know, what I love about all of these stories is there's a duality of, you know, there's parts where we're, we're, we're feeling strong and areas where we're feeling good, other areas where we're really trusting God for the next step. And actually we're holding some things in tension. And, and really the last thing I wanted to talk about was physical tension. Um, there's a fascinating book called The Body Keeps the Score. It's not written by a Christian, it's written by a psychologist, but it's just an observation on humanity and the way that we're made up. And what's really interesting is in that book you find a lot of ideas that are 
um, found in the Bible as well, that we know that God is interested in our state of being. He's interested in our physicality. He's not removed from that. The Bible says that he knits us together in our mother's womb. He also says that he catches every tear in a bottle. He's with us. He sees us. He walks through our pain. Uh, and there's a, a beautiful verse as well where he it says that he, he cares for us the way that a mother cares for her child, that he hears our pain, hears our cries in the same way that a mother would hearing a crying baby. And what I found is there's a great comfort in those things, but we do walk with this tension within us. When we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling anxious, when we're feeling unsure about the next season, we carry that also in our bodies. We carry it in our minds. Sometimes things keep us awake at night. Um, And the psalm that I'd love to share is Psalm 23. Many of you will be familiar with this. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." What's amazing about that psalm is it doesn't guarantee that we won't be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And it's this picture of difficulty, this picture of pain. And what the Bible tells us is that God carries us through it, doesn't necessarily take us out of it. Of course, there are times when God breaks through in those tremendous ways. But the tension for those of us that follow Jesus is how do we carry this stuff in a place of tension? So the question I've got uh, for you guys is when you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders... How do you bring the Lord into that? And how does he carry you through those tough moments? I'll go first. Oh, yeah, Mike. Um, for me, it's just having that friendly conversation with God. Just letting it all out. You know, just expressing what I'm feeling it, asking for help or asking for direction. Yeah, just having that normal conversation. And, and sometimes also like opening up for people. Because they sometimes God use that person to, to you know, help you through and, and, and talk to whatever he, he wants to say it and help you to go through um, that heavy thing that you feel in it so we can feel lighter. But for me also, uh, so yeah, praying and listening to, to worship songs, that's for sure. That's something that really, like, gives me so much peace and... And also like a moment where I can not just um, listen to, to the Lord, but also say something to the Lord, you know, and, and express gratitude, express just him being so faithful for everything. And yeah, just give him praise. I love the way that that takes us to a place of bringing ourselves to the Lord in those moments that we don't hide away. We don't power through, but actually saying bring, bring ourselves to God, focus on him. Yeah, Wendy. Worship songs are where I, the way I communicate to God, really, in my thoughts and in, I'll sing the words as well. And not always church worship songs, but um, artists like Casting Crowns, because their they're songs are stories. And very often I can find myself in the story, and then you find, you find peace in that. And it's, it's a way of communicating how you feel. And it's okay to be angry, and to lament the things that you've lost or the things that you're going through. There's a whole book in the Bible about lamentation, lament, lamenting, True. but we're not very good at it as Christians. I think we often feel guilty lamenting, but actually I've done a lot of that and it's helped. <laughs> so I love that you've mentioned that because, I mean, typically, if you've been around church for any number of years, there's something what I would call... I'll be careful about this, but sometimes we can enter toxic positivity where we go, we've got to put on our best front and our best selves. And of course, you know, you shouldn't necessarily avoid that. You shouldn't necessarily avoid that sense of hope. But you're right, there's a whole book of lamentations, a whole book in the Bible, all about sorrow and mourning. And, and God never calls us to ignore those things, but actually he calls us to bring those things with us in our worship and go, actually, God, I don't know. But I know that you speak in these moments. I know that you teach us through these things. So we want to bring them with Otherwise us. It makes our worship very false because yeah. it's, that's not how we are inside. It may, we may be able to put on a brave face, but God can see what, what we're really feeling. So there's not a lot of point hiding. That's so powerful, isn't it? Amazing. Faith. I mean, I think I've had so many things said to me over the years. I mean, people said, oh... Did 
do you feel angry with God because he gave you cancer? No, God didn't give me cancer. We live in a fallen world, and being a Christian isn't a life insurance policy against all life's illnesses, or they'd be queuing out the door. You never get cancer if you become a Christian. Everyone would want to become a Christian, wouldn't they? But it's about knowing that I can do it with God. I couldn't do it without God. I mean, I literally couldn't have done the journeys that I've been through, the chemos that I've been through without God. I've been covered in prayer. You know, we go, when we go to the the hospital, we play worship songs, we play the blessing in the car, and I just soak in his presence because I couldn't do it without him. And, you know, I think the enemy wants us to be fearful. And I'm just, oh, we're in the red now. Better hurry up, hadn't I? Um, uh, and I'm just not going to let him win, you know. So I let, I just soak in God's presence. But also, you know, he has given me peace. Mm. I now have a peace that I didn't have. I mean, when I was first diagnosed, I was 37. And I, you know, I struggled a lot with it. You know, I was going to, thought I was going to die. You know, I had chemo, radio, the lot. And obviously I've got a bit used to it now. And every time they say it, I'm like, oh, another one. Okay, thanks very much. But I have a peace that I didn't have before, and that's because of my relationship with Jesus. And I think the closer you are to Jesus, and it's very hard when you're going through, you know, difficult times. Mm. But if you're close to Jesus, then he can give you a peace that literally passes all understanding. And it's, you know, that's the place I want to be in. And that verse you were talking about in Psalm 139, where he knit you in your mother's womb, a bit later on in verse 16, it says... You ordained all the days of my life. And I've had that spoken over me. And I truly believe that I will have every day that God wants for me on this earth. So I won't have one day less than he wants. So when I go, it's when he wants me to go. And I'm peaceful about it. It's okay with me. Not one day less than he has given, he has given me. Yeah. I could keep going all morning. Um, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to invite the worship team back up. <coughs> Apart from Tiago. Uh, so just make your way forward. I'm going to spring this on you. We're going to pray for you guys. Um, Hannah, would you come pray? I'm going to spring on Hannah as well. Um, um, stand with me if you're able. What we'd love to do, maybe just stretch out your hand to these three wonderful people. And we're just going to pray a prayer of peace, a prayer of comfort, that God will continue to be their refuge, but also God will continue to use their stories for his glory. And so, Hannah, would you pray for us this morning? Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're here and that through the experiences that these wonderful people have been willing to share, you've touched our hearts in our own personal ways too. Thank you, God, that we've heard about your peace, your peace surpassing all understanding. We've heard about your hope. We've heard about joy. And we just thank you that in the midst of physical pain or the inability to do things that once were easy, that you are bringing hope, you're bringing peace, and you're bringing joy. So we just pray for Tiago, for Faith, and for Wendy. Mm. We pray, God, that you will encourage them from what they've shared this morning. Father God, we pray that Your love will just drench them, surround them. And we pray that that still, small voice will be heard so deeply and so personally. We thank you, God, that you knitted us together, that you've ordained the days of our lives, and that we are the one that you see. You're personal. You speak clearly. And that you lead us with love. So come Holy Spirit and bring us peace and hope and joy. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Why don't we show our appreciation this morning? Peace.